three principles of tax policy, equity, efficiency, administrability, and we're going to talk a little bit about each one. I'm Allison Christians. And I'm Leandra Letterman, and it's time to break into tax. What is efficiency? The tax system not unduly distorting economic behavior. What is equity? Equity is about distribution. Efficiency doesn't really take into account allocative issues, and equity does. And what is administrability? Administrability combines the aspects of the enforceability from the government's perspective and the taxpayer's actual ability to comply with the tax law. Now, a little caveat. I consider all of these principles to be about internal management of societies. That is, we're presupposing a society that already exists. That's to distinguish equity, efficiency, and administrability from the other kinds of tax policy theory that apply to the goals of state building, which is the development of the state, and negotiated expansion, which is the relationship between states once they each have a tax system that might interact. Today, we're going to focus only on those internal management functions. We'll talk about the main features of each of efficiency, equity, and administrability, and we'll also debunk a couple of myths. Let's start with efficiency. Efficiency is an economic concept. So often what the efficiency issue about taxation is, is that it's impossible generally to tax without altering behavior. So if it were simply that business could run, people could engage in their transactions, and then the government could surprise come in at the end and collect the tax revenue that it needed for the functioning of the government, that would be very different than the actual reality, which is that people respond to taxation and whatever's being taxed, they generally do less of. And the result of that is that taxation is not just a transfer of money from the taxpayers to the government, but there's also alteration and behavior that ends up in less of things than would otherwise occur. And that is called deadweight loss. So a simple example is, let's say you would have a certain number of books that people would buy in the absence of a tax system. And people reading books is a good thing. But then if you impose a sales tax on books, people are going to buy fewer books and they might substitute something else. Maybe they stream movies instead of reading as much. And that's a loss to society. If you conceive of society as a pie, if the government were able to sort of swoop in at the end and just take a slice of the pie, the taxpayers would have the rest and the government would have its slice. But the problem of deadweight loss is that because of people changing behavior, in effect, the pie is smaller. There's simply less to share. Some of what would otherwise be produced is just simply not produced. And that's the cost to society. Many times when people are talking about the efficiency of taxation, they're talking about minimizing this deadweight loss. Maybe a less popular view of economic efficiency is thinking about how much does it cost to raise one kind of tax versus another. So one kind of tax might be less costly to enforce or administer than another kind of tax, and therefore it's more efficient. We'll come back to that when we talk about administrability. Typically in discussions about efficiency of taxation, it's a comparative question. Because anything you tax, you're typically going to get less of. So if you tax labor, you get less of it. If you tax capital, capital may flee. If you tax consumption, you get less consumption. And so it's often a comparative question. Now, in theory, you could tax something that people could not alter. So in the most efficient tax would be a head tax. We're simply everyone pays the same tax just by virtue of being a human being. And people can't really alter that, so it would be incredibly efficient. Yeah, hard to get rid of a head. Right, but the problem with that is that it's not very equitable. You can easily see that it wouldn't work well to tax someone who is, let's say, homeless and has no income or assets the same as you tax someone really wealthy or high income, like 
Bill Gates, for example. So equity then gets to the issue of fairness. How are we going to allocate that tax burden across society? As we move from efficiency to equity, I want to just debunk a myth here. You'll often hear that efficiency is objective and equity is subjective. Nothing could be further from the truth. And sometimes people will say, fairness just means whatever I think it means. And I think that's not quite right because there's some established theory out there. The first of those is the benefits theory. And the second is the ability to pay theory. These are the two main equity theories you're gonna hear about. And they have strong historical roots. So benefits theory, sometimes people link it to Locke. No, not that Locke, the other Locke, John Locke who said, it is true governments cannot be supported without great charge, and it is fit everyone who enjoys their share of the protection should pay out of their estate their proportion for the maintenance of it. So Locke is talking about benefits, but benefits theory is difficult. It's very challenging because one, you have valuation problems. How much did you benefit compared to me from public goods? And two, you have the problem that you just mentioned about trying to extract money from people who may not have it. The benefits principle is really an idea of quid pro quo. And I think that breaks down pretty quickly. Our government is not fee for service. And if it is, you really are going to run into some problems because when some people need services and cannot pay for them, what is the plan? And this is why most theorists reject the benefits principle as a way to explain how to build a tax system. It might give you a threshold to say it's okay to tax, but it doesn't tell you how to build a tax system. What helps us build a tax system in a way that people will accept is to consider ability to pay. People often point to Adam Smith as the first proponent of the ability to pay theory. Let me tell you what Adam Smith said about it. Individuals ought to contribute toward the support of the government as nearly as possible in proportion to their respective abilities. And now in ability to pay, we just are saying that We have to, as a matter of developing a tax system, we have to take into account that different people have, in fact, different abilities and that that actually matters in the design of the tax system. We should design rules that treat people who are like alike and treat people who are different appropriately differently. Right, which brings us to horizontal and vertical equity. The idea of horizontal equity is that similarly situated taxpayers should be treated alike as a matter of fairness. And vertical equity is the idea that those with more of income or wealth, whichever you're taxing, should pay more tax. Here, I just want to debunk another myth. There's an idea that, well, okay, you don't actually have to make the tax system fair because you can make it totally unfair and then fix the fairness by making cash transfers. But I actually think that's incorrect for the reason that there are political and social, cultural and economic dimensions to both the collection of the tax and the distribution of the transfers. And so you can't just fix an unequal tax system by pushing cash at people when pushing cash at people itself has equity, efficiency, and administrability concerns. The tax and transfer systems are connected, but a lot of times they're looked at really in isolation from one another, and that can be myopic. So when we think about fairness, it's true you could have different conceptions of fairness or equity and have different ideas about what that might look like. But at the really basic level, there are some principles that are just enduring, and those are the ones that we're focused on here. Administrability traditionally was neglected, and sometimes it was called simplicity, which is misleading. Administrability is not about the idea of just making your tax system somehow less complex. It's really about the idea of can the government enforce it and can people comply with it? So you could have a tax system that's beautiful on paper in terms of how efficient it is and how equitable it is, But if it requires something like access to people's thoughts in order to administer, that's obviously impossible. And 
Moving beyond that, you have to look at the administrative capacity of the particular government. This is an issue in developing countries, but it's also just an issue everywhere of whenever the legislature enacts tax laws, how is that going to be translated by the tax administration to the forms that individuals have to fill in? If you have a system like in the U.S. where people file tax returns, and that the government has to try to explain to people like the IRS issues publications that are written in lay terms. Is the law designed in a way that it could actually work on the ground? Administrability has a law and society aspect to it. The law on the books has to be able to be translated in a way that it works on the ground or what results might turn out to actually be very inefficient or very inequitable, or both. So let's just debunk one more myth then, that administrability is somehow a functional or instrumental thing, that it's non-principled or non-normative in nature. In fact, the idea of administrability is very much grounded in the idea that the tax system has to be equitable and has to observe efficiency principles. Otherwise, it's going to fall. A lot of the writing on tax policy traditionally focused on efficiency and equity, but there's a quote that I think is really worth keeping in mind, which is tax administration is tax policy. The tax system can't be administered. What you have is maybe a thought experiment. It's not actually tax policy. All right. That was just a little bit on efficiency, equity, and administrability. Please, Please like this video, subscribe, and share it with your friends who are also trying to, to break, break into, into tax. tax.